All right, so I said I was gonna do some spalling, but I decided instead I'm going to work this really nasty piece of Texas chert. I could pro, I basically have to clean, I'm gonna get rid of all this section right here. Um, and then I'm probably gonna try and work the stuff closest to the face because this is raw. And a lot of this Texas material, this is the Pedronalis, um, even a lot of the Texas material and in, in some shirts in general that what I found and what a lot of other people have observed is the material closest to the cortex is cortex is often the best and so what happens is you know and I did this myself as a beginner you know you'll get this rock and you'll just be banging it and you'll get it down and you'll be taking you know big flakes off of each side and then you'll get to the middle and it'll be like full of concrete all right, so to attack this hump, this platform's set up so I can punch flakes this way, but I'm not sure I want to do that. I could take a big hammer stone and try and re remove a, a, like a spall off of this face, but then that would set me up potentially with like just right up next to this junk, but it could make it so I could flip this over and strike this. Um, Well, I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to take a little back flake and then I'm going to strike here, see if I can get any of that junk off. So I'm going to first, I'm going to, and the only reason I'm doing that is um, because that was cortex there and um, I wanted to get rid of that, but it did kind of play with the angle. So what I'm going to do here, there we go. small little flake we could probably use or at least if we do ever heat treat this stuff we could throw this in the, the cooker gotta make a box of the rocks I'm gonna cook even a little flake like this can turn into a little bird pointer um, a tool <laughs> supporting the back end of the piece Ooh. anyways that didn't really do. There we go. That was Funny enough, that wasn't exactly what I wanted, but um, what's cool is now I have two pieces because this was a kind of an awkward shaped piece um, and I got the material up by the cortex that I wanted, which will be really nice and easy to clean up. And then I got this piece here, which is, you know, I probably only lost maybe three quarters of an inch um, off of the end, which is material I was going to lose anyway. Um, so this is cool. This is nice. Uh, and that was with the antler. So that's pretty neat. My hammerstone's kind of falling apart, but uh, this antler billet's been really doing good. It's not even the biggest one I have. So I'm gonna stick with the antler a little bit longer here. And when the hammerstone platforms do pop up, I will go ahead and hit them with the hammerstone. All right, so what I'm working on here is this little square edge. And ideally I'm trying to raise this up to get rid of this hump. Now. I do want to keep as much length as possible um, and I'm feeling like I could come in with the width and I'm 
Not sure, normally I would go like with this type of cross section or this way, but um, I think that I'm gonna lose something with this, so I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but um, at the end of the day, I'll be happy with whatever we get out of this. So I think to attack this, I have a couple of different routes. Now the safest way would be to raise this edge up um, by striking down and raising this edge up to strike it. But a easier, maybe an easier way to describe that for y'all would be lowering, turn, turning this into a platform and lowering it so that it's closer to level with this and then hitting it. Um, the only reason I would go as far to say closer to, um, you know, lowering it to a little more extreme of a... Uh, okay, so I'm gonna raise this up. Um, we have some cortex. All right, so what I just did is something pretty extreme. I took this down so that I'm gonna knock this edge off. That'll make it, ultimately it'll bring me back to my center line. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's gave me a platform angle to strike into here to raise this up to then get that. Um, and maybe some of you, if you're watching and you're you know, way more advanced, would think what I'm doing is, you know, there's always, there's a bunch of different ways. Napping is kind of like painting or um, any kind of, any art form where it's not the kind of thing where there's just one way to do it. There's not just one way to reduce a rock. Um, and I think that if you were to argue that that's the case, then you're missing a lot. There's many different ways to do this. Um, and I think that's illustrated really nicely if you, um, kind of look at all the different characters and all the different ways that people like to break rocks. So we don't even, you know, there's so much, there's just so many different ways to do this. All right, so I'm gonna strike inward. We could travel to about the center. This is a raw piece. I'll probably chip this into a little hunting point for myself because um, I like this raw stuff for hunting. Um, I've been actually meaning to make myself a new knife, but I've been wanting to make it out of the raw stuff, maybe Georgetown, I'm not sure. Um, another little flake. Another little blade. All right. So. Now. I've got my platform start to set up for this hump here. Ooh. There's some, it's kind of fractured in there, but you guys can see I've got that set up. There's the upper angle. Um, and it's just a huge hump. So I'm gonna try and get it. I'm probably gonna start with a kind of banking it down and hitting down just to create a better angle. And then I'll move my, I'll adjust my platform over and then I'll try and come in. Um, I might, this is probably, this is definitely probably a, better suited for the hammerstone, but I don't know. Let me see how the antler feels on it. I might try the antler and support it on the pad to get the flake to dive under. I don't know. We'll see. This could just be a fail, but that's why you guys are watching, right? Like I said in some of my other videos, just I don't know what it is, but sometimes the antler, I just feel a little more confident with it because swinging copper boppers. I'm going to keep my fingers on this hump so as if the flake travels to there it'll it'll kind of confuse the rock and think it has more mass than it does um, and I'm just gonna hope I'm gonna support this here and I'm just gonna hope that I can get the flake to travel I'm gonna hit down with a little bit of inward force okay so here we are I hit down, I supported with a little bit of the inward force. There's a piece. This was the goal was to get rid of this crazy hump here. As you can see, it ran under the hump and ran pretty deep and removed it entirely. So now we've got that gone. It looked mostly superficial, but there was some junk in there. So now we're dealing with a much more normal piece here. Um,
Got a little platform here. Support it in my hand, put it up against the pad, and I'm gonna support the ridge. So I want it to run at least to about here. So the goal is this little flake will kind of feather out and take off a little bit of that. Support it in there. All right, so it actually ran the full length and overshot slightly. I was supporting it and pushing it into my hand. Um, and it took off a lot of that stuff that I wanted it to. And there's our beautiful flake here. That's an overshot, so we must be making a Clovis. <laughs> Just kidding. 